lost the battle. And to top it off, underneath it, Republicans in cahoots with Hillary. And I click on it, it's about me from Breitbart. I never expected it. Never. No, no, I never thought this would happen. Never. Ask yourself how it is that I have written five, I think it's six bestsellers in a row. Six New York Times bestsellers in a row. If I read to you the names of the radio and TV shows I will be on over the next week, you will come to understand who is on which side of the aisle. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-A. Change the bumpers today to uh, the Battle Hymn of the Republic because it's the only thing that's running through my ears. But I want you to decide, you to listen to which side of the aisle the individuals and the shows who are not mentioned here are on. And, and never mind what they say to you. I'm going to read you the short list of those who have agreed to talk about my book. Breitbart, KSFO Radio, Morning Show, Newsmax TV, John DePetro Show, Laura Ingram, Alex Jones. That's it. That's it. You've heard the whole list. You decide which side of the aisle Fox News and the Rush Cartel is really on, and then you'll understand why you've lost the uh, battle. Then maybe you'll come to understand there's shadows on the wall and you've been played. Michael Savage Unleashed. Stop the Muslim invasion of America. Republicans are in cahoots with Hillary. A generation numb by meds. I gave an interview with Breitbart News Editor-in-Chief Alexander Marlow. I think he's a young man in his 20s, on the book Government Zero. And he aired it on Sirius XM Patriot over the weekend. I think the interview was so powerful that I'm going to play a piece of it when I come back after the bottom of the hour. Because you've got to hear it. You've got to hear that there are young people who are knowledgeable about what is going on and what needs to be done. Not everyone's a dummy. And something I didn't mention today, I think it's important to say right now. Many of you say, ah, you know, he's a really good salesman. He's selling his book. Yeah, I really, I get it. You know, you're all so cynical. Oh, you're so cynical. You can look through everything, can't you? You're so smart that you've lost your country. You can't see through Barack Obama and what a Machiavellian monster he is. You can't see through any of that, can you? But you can see through me, you think, right? Well, let me tell you something. I gave away $100,000 of my own money to the Savage Scholarship Fund in case you missed that show. I don't boast about it, but I think it's important you know it. I gave out five twenty thousand dollar prizes last uh, month, two months ago, three months ago, and every dollar that I earn on this book, Government Zero, above the advance, every dollar of profit, every dollar will go into the Savage Scholarship Fund, and it's not a nonprofit organization, by the way. I specifically would not make it an unprofit organization. I didn't get a tax write-off for it, and nor will you. Because you know, I'm not asking you for donations. I'm like Donald Trump. I'm not asking you for any money. You hear what I just said to you? I'm not asking you for donations to the Savage Scholarship Fund because there is no such private foundation in terms of a nonprofit, rather. You can't give money to it right now. I give the money to it. And that's why I want you to buy the book. How do you like that? So if you care about the next generation and you want to do something, buy the book. All profits go to that fund. See, I'd like that to be one of my legacies. I want that to, to live beyond me, whether it's beyond me uh, in the media or beyond me in, in life itself. I want that to be a legacy of Michael Savage, the Savage Scholarship Fund. You know how many years I've searched to leave something behind other than my books and my, my, my few silly little paintings? My writings, my journals. Well, what do you really leave behind? What does a man leave behind? I'm not dead yet, but I'm saying we think about these things after a certain point in our life. What am I going to leave behind? 21 years of broadcasts? A, me a, a, me a message of borders, language, and culture? You'll forget me a minute after I'm dead. But the Savage Scholarship Fund will go on. It's simple. <laughs> an essay on what it means to be an American. 500 words or less. You can't believe the essays that we got. You can see the winning essays on michaelsavage.com. I'd like this to go on for the next X number of years. You know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to kick it off with the book in this sense. And if you think it's just about selling books, I've showed you. I gave away $100,000 of my own money last year to the fund. What more do I need to do to prove to you that I really care about what I'm saying? 
well, I can't do any more than what I've already done. It's that simple. Let's take a couple of quick calls. You've been holding so long. Mark on WBAP in Dallas, Texas. Fire away. You're on the Savage Nation today. First call of the day. Uh, yes, sir. I just want to let you know, uh, Mr. Savage, here in Central Texas, for the first time ever, I went on that Amazon.com. I bought one of your books. They said it's going to be to my house on the 27th. Good luck on that because I live in rural America, nowhere USA. Second, I'm going to read it, chew on it, digest it. Then I'm going to give it to my neighbor, liberal screw stick, that keeps verbally wanting to joust about things he has no clue about. Wait, wait, did you say to your neighbor? I keep on telling him. Big wait, sir, did you, did you say you're going to give it to your neighbor? Yes, sir. Well, after I read the one that you wrote... Yeah, yeah, I'm saying, but it's it's to a liberal neighbor who doesn't really know what's going on. That's exactly what I'm asking people to do. Buy one, give one free. How's that? Give one to your neighbor. And, and when they say, you know what, I don't want to read that crap. You know what you say to them? I thought you're such an open-minded liberal. Why don't you at least read what this scholar has to say about it? There's 30 pages of references. Why don't you read it and then discuss it with me? Challenge them. That's the point. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. I must say, and 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 I'm not I'm not one to flatter too many people, but I think uh, our interview last year when you were on this program was definitely one of the highlights for me. Well, uh, I'd like to make news today with you, so that people don't think it's oh ho hum another book. Last time it was stop the coming civil war, and I don't know whether we stopped it or started it. But the fact of the matter is, we did something big last time, and that was to get all the conservatives who were not going to vote to hold their nose and vote for Romney. And I told them to do that. I said our object was after the Republicans were put back in power, our, our work would begin, and we would have to hold their feet to the fire. Well, that didn't work out too well. They have no feet to hold to the fire. They're, they're footless. Wow. So here we go again. We're down to the wire. Government zero. No borders, no language, no culture. What do we do about a, a rogue government? And what does the title mean is the, is the question. Government zero. Meaning yes. more government, zero representation. It's a government unto itself. It doesn't represent the people. We all know that. So what do we do about it? Well, first we have to come up with a plan. And I have a 40-point action plan in the back of the book, last chapter. But before we get there, I have to say this at the outset. The most important thing I'm trying to do is have everyone who knows the story, tell the story to someone who doesn't know the story. There's a wife, there's a husband, there's a daughter in college, there's a brother-in-law, there's a neighbor, who may be nice, good people, intelligent, but they have no idea what the tsunami is that has hit America. They don't even know they're swimming in it. They don't know they're in the eye of the storm. They have no idea about the Muslim invasion. They have no idea about the rogue government. They have no idea about Barry in the White House. And my object is to take one last chance at awakening America. You know, many years ago, I started the Paul Revere Society back in the early 90s. Those were the progenitors of the Tea Party. If I have to say it myself, we used to have thousands of people attend these events. The Paul Revere Society events, name them and shame them, try them and, try and fry them. Well, we have a movement. There are millions of activated people in the country. But we don't have representation. That's the problem. Isn't that correct? This awakening of America, Dr. Savage, this is so key because we are standing idly by, are we not, as people come in who have no intention of assimilating. I've lived in Los Angeles all over it. They're, they're not trying to live up to the American dream, many of them. They're trying to just co-opt America for their own purposes. Well, that's half the problem. If we thought we had a problem with the illegals from south of the border, that's nothing compared to what's coming. If Barry from Honolulu is allowed to bring in, what, 100,000 Syrian Muslims, most of whom are military-age men. Don't you love the pictures? Even Breitbart has the best pictures, by the way. Thank you. Urges of migrants into Europe. Do you notice that there are almost no women and children except when you do a close... When the AP or Reuters wants to propagandize the fact that it's families fleeing, they show women and children. But if you actually look at the pictures on Breitbart, it's 90% men of military age. They're fleeing.
fleeing the war because they're probably here to start one. I haven't any idea why there's no opposition to this, not only from the Republican Party, but from the American people. But I think that with your show, shows like yours, mine, books like Government Zero, we just might be able to stop them before they sweep over this nation and convert it into something it was never intended to be. I got a theory that I think a lot of the reason why we we accept it is because we've all been brainwashed in terms of multiculturalism. Is that um, and it's a there's no American exceptionalism, there's no patriotism, but you're taught that all cultures are equal and that all cultures are equally a part of American life, and that there's no culture that's better than the next. Well, I understand what the brainwashing is. Now, couple that with your generation, not you, having been raised on medication, mm. a lot of. The kids in your generation, and I have two children who are grown. I saw the pressures on us. We're raised on Adderall, Ritalin Adderall. This was all a gigantic destruction of the, um, the critical mind. Let's put it that way. You put people on these medications, they feel better, but they're not thinking anymore because they're not feeling anything. And the object was to numb people. Once you numb a population and you convert them over to hedonists, where if it feels good, do it, the ethos of the 60s. You can, take, you can mold them into any shape that you want. And believe me, they're winning. I mean, the, you know, the other day I was on the radio, I said something that uh, <clears throat> was written up. It's a big story for next week, which is I said we've lost the battle. And I had many people calling saying, Savage, I didn't know that you were a, a defeatist. I said, I didn't say we lost the war. I said, we've lost the battle. Now, that was the day before... I said it on a Wednesday. That was the day before Hillary smashed the Republicans into dust at the hearing, which is another story. I think it was orchestrated, incidentally. It was a kabuki play. They were in, in cahoots with her. We can talk about that if you want, because they could have brought in a surprise witness, uh, like the, uh, the brother from Sicily and the Godfather, who would upset the whole hearings. And that surprise witness could have been any one of the generals or admirals who was ready to send aid to Benghazi, who was fired right after the Benghazi a disaster in order to make certain that they wouldn't uh, that they wouldn't testify there were generals and admirals dismissed by obama almost immediately after the benghazi disaster general carter ham served as head of the united states african command during the bloodshed of benghazi when the four americans were murdered right now who was ham very few people know he was a career military man african american by the way twenty six years of service and even he because he was critical of the Obama administration for not sending reinforcements to help the U.S. citizens under attack in Benghazi. Ham was, quote, resigned and retired in April 2013. They threw him out. Stalin shot the generals who he opposed. Obama smears them and fires them. He could have been brought in. <clears throat> he could have been brought into the hearing as a surprise witness, saying we were ready, willing, and able to send aid. Rear Admiral Charles Gouet, Navy, commander of Carrier Strike Group 3, the best of them, in charge of aircraft carriers in the Mediterranean Sea the night of the Benghazi assault on September 11, 2012. Under testimony, he said he could have launched aircraft uh, to the destination. Now listen what they did to this man. He was accused of using profanity in a public setting. Can you believe that that was the pretext for firing a hero such as Admiral Charles Gouet, commander of the carrier wow. strike group, who could have sent aid to Benghazi? Now, you ask yourself, why didn't the Republicans call him during the hearing to testify that he was ready, willing, and able to send uh, aid? The answer is because they probably threatened them. They retired him with full pay under the assumption that if he ever testifies against this administration, this corrupt government zero of ours, at least that's my guess, okay? I'm writing a movie script. And if it was a movie, the Republicans really wanted to show the good guys winning. In the end, they bring in one of these admirals, generals fired, Right after Benghazi, he testifies. The hearing erupts into a stunned silence. That's the end of Hillary Clinton's career. So you ask yourself, why didn't they bring them in? Answer, because they were in cahoots with Hillary to make certain she walked away unscathed to anoint her the next president of the United States of America. It's a plan. It's a plot. It's unbelievable. It's government zero from the top to the bottom.